Welcome to the next lecture of our course. In this lecture, we'll be talking about how that we can convert this task.run method to start using an await keyword instead of the wait that we have been using all these days over here. So I want to convert this line of code first so that I can show you how that the asynchronous code can also be converted into an code which can show you the response which is available instantly instead of showing all the response same time. So for doing that, the first change, as you can see over here, I'm gonna make is, I'm gonna copy this line of code. I'm gonna paste it over here. And I'm gonna say with async keyword. And I'm just gonna make this line of code, as you can see, I'm just going to make this as task of a string over here. And I'm gonna say first completed task is equal to task dot when any but instead of that i'm going to use an await keyword something like this so once i make this as an await keyword you know that we have to make this method as an async of task as you can see over here so now this code is quite legal for us over here and because i have made this when any method as await i don't really need to use the continue with method that we have done over here so I can just get rid of this whole thing from here to here. And over here for the completed response, I can just say like first completed response instead of result, I can actually use an await keyword, something like this. So this is going to print the value for me using the await keyword. And similarly, let me also format this code a bit because it's not quite right. There we go. And similarly, for the completed task that we have written over here, I can also make this as task of string. So let me make this as task of string, something like this. And for this completed response, I can just change it to first completed task, uh, something like this. And then this is all completed. And instead of the result, I'm just gonna turn this into an await keyword. And we don't really require the continuation task dot wait anymore. And you can see that now this code is quite easy and straightforward to follow. So basically the line of the code is pretty much exactly the same task dot run over here. And we are using the task dot when any method pretty much like how we used before. But instead of the continue with method, we are actually using an await keyword because await keyword is essentially gonna wait for us until the operation is fully complete. And that's the reason why I wanted to differentiate and show you the reason why we need a continue with and why we have moved into an await keyword and how C sharp.net has simplified the way we have to wait for an asynchronous operation to complete. So that's why we have an continue with, which is an await keyword essentially. And it is gonna await until the request is fully complete. So this operation like the wait and the continue with all being taken care for us over here using the await keyword. And then we write the same code over here inside what we have written before with the await response. So now if I try to call the same code with the asynchronous operation, which is gonna be the sync web client dot with async. And if I, because it's an async method, I need to use an await keyword, which you are quite aware of that already. So if I save this code and if I run it, you will notice that it's gonna print the first response immediately and then it is gonna perform the printing of the second response for us over here. So this is how we could able to perform an asynchronous operation for a non-asynchronous method. But that is fine. We are fine with all these things and we already know that the playwright is basically going to be an synchronous operation. So how do we make this code to print me out a value once it is available. So for doing that, I'm actually going to do pretty much exactly the same kind of operation that we have done over here as well. So I'm gonna copy this whole thing and I'm gonna go to the asynchronous code, paste it over here. And this is gonna be demo of an async HTTP call async. And instead of the task.run that we are gonna be doing over here, I'm just going to use the fetch data async method. If you remember this method that we wrote before, and this is going to be a fetch data async method as well, something like this. And that's all we have to do. And all the code remains the same over here. 
because we definitely need to call the task dot when any method because we have to see which response is actually available and then that's it this code is going to be quite legal as well so if i just go back program.cs and if i just say await async http client dot demo async http call async and if i try to run this code it is going to print the first value immediately and then it's going to print the second response for us so now you have seen how we can make our existing code to an asynchronous code using task and using the async await keyword so this is what we have learned over here and this is so much important for you to understand while we actually work with the playwright because playwright is also using an async and await operation